Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now then, before we go into today's broadcast, I've got a lot to share with you and I know you're really, really waiting to hear. Praise God. Hey, like or, or, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like this message and share it. It's very important you do so. You will be helping us send this message to those in your um, contact or within your reach. Praise God. Are you ready to call for your daily bread? Join me right now. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I release angels right now to go bring out the things that have been ordained for your peace today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now we are talking about the true light. Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse 12, I am the light of the world. Now I'll share something yesterday with you. And I said, I asked the Lord, say, Lord, how do I become free from sin? Now I said, be, be, be concerned or be, be exact when you're dealing with the Lord. Don't go and say, how do we be free? How do I? Because now you're dealing with you. And then the Lord said to me, he says, the day you start taking responsibility, that day you become free from sin. Taking responsibility, how? He said, now you hear God, and most times that's what the Lord will do. He'll throw a word at you. Now, what do you do when he throws a word at you? You can argue with the word. You can choose to say, hmm, 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 well, hmm, it is well, I thought you will explain. Or you can start meditating on what he said. And I told you this, when he sees you meditating on his word, he falls in love with you. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. You see, sometimes people have, People don't have that relationship where the Lord will tell them things. And some, the, the Lord only tell you, you know, you know, you know, a lot of things will learn from him. <laughs> the Lord actually told me this one time. He says, when all you hear, when you talk about hearing God, when all you hear is about the work that you are doing, then this is what the Lord told me. He says, then, know that you haven't been fellowshipping with the Spirit of God. You have been fellowshipping with the angel that was assigned to you for the work. Did you hear me? I'll repeat that again. When all you hear from God is about the work you are doing. The only time you hear God is when he tells you you are expanding. Go, out, go to a place and open a new branch. Or when you minister tomorrow, do this. When that's all you hear, you're not hearing from God. You're hearing from the angel that I've been assigned to your ministry. So what that angel does is he looks into the script of your work and he instructs you from that work. That's not the Holy Spirit. Now, the job of the Holy Spirit is to make you, you, <laughs> you, is to make you whole, is to make you fit, is to prepare you as a person. So if you don't hear that, that's why Many people can be living in strife for years and their work is still progressing. Eventually, the work will spoil. Yeah, it will because the strife. Now, now, when Satan allows that to happen, see, because when your brood is strive in your heart, you have given yourself over to him. You're his in arena. Strife is his environment. The Bible says where there's envy and strife, there is what? Confusion and every evil work. So when a man stays in strife for so long, maybe you're striving with another minister. Now, you know when there's strife in your heart. You know. When, when you cannot freely see that minister and, and, and honestly from your heart, love and embrace him. Now, the strife may have been because of what he did or because of what you did. It doesn't matter. When you notice that you are in strife, 
it's your responsibility to kill it immediately. Take action to kill it immediately. You remember Abraham. He called Lot. He said, Lot, let there be no strife. Because you see, Abraham saw that this action is brewing strife. So he says, hey guy, let there be no strife between us. So this is the best thing we should do right now. So that we'll live in peace. You see that now? He didn't close his mouth and say, no, I will not walk in strife. I will not walk in strife. I will not. Sometimes dealing with strife will require you sitting down with the person that you feel strife is brewing up and ironing things out. And said, so, this is the situation. This is how things are. So let's take this decision so that we don't enter into strife. That's how you should deal. So when Satan allows you to walk in strife for so long, and, and everything looks okay. Say, you mean Satan allows it? Yeah, because that's his environment. The moment you enter strife, things are supposed to start getting spoiled around you. So when they don't spoil, when things are still working out and you know you're in strife, then Satan is preparing you for a big one. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. He's preparing for it. So if you realize you're striving with a minister and then your own ministry is growing, and then you are telling yourself, you see, that minister thought he, he, he knew more than me. And you're saying that. You're in strife. And your work is going on. Ah, I'll tell you this. <laughs> the day everything is going to crumble, you will cry to God on that day and you will get no response. You know why? He has been able to isolate you completely from the Lord. So the day you cry to the Lord, even, <laughs> even the Lord will be in support that let everything crumble. Then if your cry is genuine, the Lord will begin to build with you again. Say, and you say, oh yeah, that's the truth. So kill this thing immediately. So I was talking about the Lord talking to you about you. So when you don't hear God tell you, my son, you're in strife. You don't hear those things. And you know you're in strife. You still pray, oh God. God said, tomorrow, next week, the anointing is going to be greater when you minister. Ah, thank you, Jesus. It's not Jesus. It's the angel. Take that from me. It's the angel. The angels have no business how you live your lives. Oh, it's none of their business. I, no angel is going to look at you and say, you are, you're a sinner. I can't walk with you again. No angel can do that. They are under command and they will obey the command. So how you know is when the Lord don't talk to you about you. When your life is not changing, everything is still okay. <laughs> so the Lord said that to me, like the day you begin to take responsibility. Now, I know this was the Lord talking to me. And meditating on it. You know, you, you don't just say, Lord, tell me more. Don't act like a fool before the Lord. He doesn't like fools. He has no, he takes no pleasure in fools. <laughs> you know that? Now. So, you know, sometimes you want God to explain everything. Make an effort. Work on your mind. So, okay, Lord. Okay. What can I do with that statement? The day you begin to take responsibility. What is responsibility? You want to do some study on that? Yeah. You do all that. Learn here, learn there. And then you bring all that knowledge back to him. I say, Lord, the other day you said this to me. This is what I've figured out. What do you think? And so the Lord said this to me. He said, Every action of yours. You know, most times people make that, people say those things. That, oh, it's the devil. No, no devil. Every action of yours. Every action of yours is as a result of your decision. Now, it doesn't matter what influenced it. But you see, even that influence is only trying to get you to make a decision. You see that now? So, 
you, you, you sit here and you see a lady and you begin to lust after her. Now, <laughs> if someone say, I, I can't help it, I can't help it. When I see um, ladies, I, I don't know what, what comes over me. I, I can't help it, but just my heart will just start. Uh, 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 no, 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 no. Because there are ladies you have seen and that didn't happen. <laughs> That's the truth. So don't deceive yourself. You've seen ladies and nothing happened. You've seen naked mad women on the streets and you felt sorry for them. So why do you say, I can't, I can't stand seeing a naked woman? See that now? You're actually not taking responsibility. You take responsibility. It is my decision to let my mind go in this direction or to let my mind go in the other direction. So what you see, you choose how you want to analyze it. It's your choice. And when taking responsibility simply means, and thank you, Lord Jesus, taking responsibility simply means taking charge, not only for yourself, but also for the other fellow. Now, I use, um, I use how fornication works or adultery works, for, for example. So you see this person. You, you start feeling lustful concerning that person. And then you allow it flow. And you begin to enjoy the thoughts in your mind. Now what's going on? You are, the influence is coming on you. Then the next thing, now no influence will make you pick up your phone and call. It's a decision you take and said, okay, let me call this person. It's you that take that decision. No influence will make you. You don't just realize that your phone is in your hand. You don't just realize that you, you have dialed the number. You don't just realize that the person has said hello and say, oh, hi. <laughs> no, it is you that take that decision. Let me call. Then you pick up your phone and then you call. You see that now? And whatever happens afterwards, you, there are several decisions you have to take. Oh, let's meet at such and so place. Okay, it was your decision. Even after making that arrangement, it was still your decision to enter your car and drive in that direction. No influence was doing that for you. It was still your decision when you got to that place to leave your car, you still had a choice. I'm right there. You know what? Let me turn back and go home. It's still your decision. To knock on that door was your decision. Everything that happens was your decision. And guess how why it went true? Because you never took responsibility. You see that now? Now, taking responsibility, I said take responsibility for yourself and take responsibility for the other person. Hey, no matter how far you have gone, you stop there. You can start taking responsibility today. You stop there and say, you know what? This is not right. This is not right. And we shouldn't be doing this. And you, listen, because if you truly love people, you won't lead them. Now, not just you now, you won't lead yourself. Because remember the Bible says, Jesus actually, you know, um, Jesus taught us how to love. Right? And he said, greater love has no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. Now, we were instructed also to love the same way. And then we were commanded to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. See that now? So, how do you love yourself? That's not the road I want to go down. So, if I'm not going to go down that road, then you don't want to lead someone else down that road. See that now? So that's taking responsibility for yourself and then taking responsibility for another person. Every sin that you commit, everyone from lying, from cheating, everyone was a function of your decision. So when David said, 
Thy word have I hidden in my heart so that I will not sin against you. He wasn't saying, I'm so afraid to break the word of God. Uh, no, 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 no. He, he said, what does the word do in you? The word brings truth and awareness to your heart. So now the word makes you understand your worth. The word makes you understand who you are. So you see yourself clearly from his light. And then you take that decision. I said, no, I wouldn't do this. Now, the Lord begins to take you through that whole journey. I got here talking about Job, you remember? So God looked at Job and said, you know what, Job? I really, you, you've been a perfect man. I want to bless you. So God had to take out everything he had gotten by himself. He took it out. Now, you see the same principle that worked in Job was the same principle that worked in Abraham. How? Less you say. Less you say. Less you say. See that now? Now, God doesn't share his honor with anyone he doesn't so when he fills you with truth and you begin to see clearly now that's what abraham did that's what god did to abraham when he met melchizedek melchizedek showed him how blessed he was he says blessed be abraham of the most high god the possessor of heaven and earth do you know that statement is so powerful Oh, you don't realize. Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God. So he tied Abraham to being one with the Most High. See, of. Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. I belong to the possessor of heaven and earth. Do you know what that means? Then he says, Now, don't take even a shoelace from this guy. Lest he say he's made you rich. But, but, but I, I fought the war. Those things belong to me actually, yes. But I don't want you to take them. What do you think he's doing there? He is taking responsibility over Abraham's life. So he's now choosing which money Abraham should receive and which one he should not receive. The same thing he did to Job. Job's own, he had gathered enough. God brought everything down. Now when God takes you through that journey, how many would survive? Many believers have not been able to walk on that journey with God. And so when they become rich, in quotes, rich, and God wants to take them through that path, it becomes a struggle. Because you see, anything God has not given to you, he can never lay claim to it. And that's why you see lots of believers find it difficult to tithe. Because the truth is, what they have, God didn't give. So they don't even recognize him as the giver. I know we understand, we, we want to pull in all this thought that whatever we get comes from the Lord. But you don't really re recognize that because if you do, tithing will never be an issue with you. Because the Bible says you must remember the Lord your God. See that now? So, because when you begin to tithe, you're exposing yourself into an arena with God. I'm telling you the truth. Now, you may get into trouble in the world because when God starts becoming jealous of you, he will start cutting off things so that he can now put his own there. Praise <laughs> God. Hey, you know what that does to you? It brings you to the place where your whole life is full of lights. And no darkness can come near you. Praise God. Oh, Father, we bless you. 
the joy of your truth in us. The joy of us being enveloped in your truth. Cause us to walk every second in this joy. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.